Navy C. It's me, Roger, back with another video. It's been a while. Um, thank you to everyone for your comments. Um, people got in touch with me. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, figured out what's wrong. I'm on medication. I'm feeling better than I have in, in a long time. Um, I really appreciate your concern. Um, yeah. Cheers. For you beer fans, this is, uh, I'm having a new Belgium 1554 black lager. It's not a stout, but it's pretty good. Uh, in the background, we're listening to uh, Robert Rich, Seven Veils. Uh, Hearts of Space. This came out in 1998 uh, or something like that. Carm, Gorgo, 71. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for stuff like this. Uh, pretty sure this never came out on vinyl, but uh, it's it's an audiophile spectacular for uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, New Age, I guess. That's where they stuck it. Cheap. They're giving away CDs these days. All right, so it's probably been a month or so since I did a vinyl update, and that's a long time. And so I've got quite a stack of stuff here to show, tell. Uh, we'll see how long, how long it goes. Um, first of all, uh, it was my birthday a couple weeks ago. Thank you to everyone who wished me happy birthday. A friend of mine was like, who are all these people? I told him about the VC. Um, it's also my wife's birthday, Liz. So, you know, it kind of evens out, but this year we decided to give each other uh, this. Two box sets of uh, William Onyebor. On Luwakabop. Uh, they're limited to 3,000. You can see mine is number 1250 of 3,000. And it includes uh, five albums and a seven inch. I'll pull them out and show you. And then there's the box set number two, which contains four albums and a seven inch. Uh, also numbered, I got a nice low number here, 475 of, the th of 3,000. Uh, now, that Who is William Onyebor comp that Luwakabop put out last year is a huge hit in the VC, and rightfully so, it's so great. Uh, so when I found out they were doing this, I, I was all over it. You know, his whole story is so fascinating. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff here, like a booklet. Seven inch here. A, uh, oh, I creased it. Um, flyer from his whole production studio, and you know, so little is known about him. You know, was he a Soviet stooge set up in Nigeria to make these crazy records? And then all of a sudden, he quits and turns Christian and refuses to talk about this period in his life. I'm making a mess here. Alright, so this one includes uh, semi-reproductions of each record. This is Crashes in Love, the first version. There's a second version in this second box. Uh, even reproduces the wear, probably because, you know, the original films don't exist anymore. And, now, I don't know what's going on here with the eight microphones in front of his mouth. Uh, but there's some crazy effects going on with on this. Uh, so, yeah, this is Atomic Bomb. Tomorrow. You know, originals of these, 
you know, only ever pressed in Nigeria, I think. Impossibly rare. Gray Lover. And there's his facility there. There's another shot of him in the studio with 15 microphones in front of his mouth. I I'm not sure what's going on there. Really, really, really cool. Really, really nicely pressed vinyl. Quiet and flat. And is it digital? Yeah, of course it is. But um, they really did a good job. Not expensive for what you're getting here. Um, and then same goes with the second box, which completes his discography. 7 inch, uh, they both come with download cards, and booklet. This one has this huge poster. Anyway, I'm not going to unfold all that. So here we have uh, Crashes in Love, the second version. Body and Soul. So these all came out late 70s, early 80s, I believe, up through maybe the mid 80s. Now look at these crazy covers. Hypertension. Um, he doesn't look that tense there. You know, and you can see Luwaka Bops put their logo on this. So they're, you know, they're not reproductions per se. Really cool. Uh, here's a good name. Um, so yeah, happy birthday to us with some killer psychedelic Afropop. William Onya Boar. If you like that comp, you'd love these, I swear. Um, there's also a CD set. It has it all. Really awesome stuff there. Um... Not a lot of new vinyl, but some things, some metal, of course. Gotta, you know, have the metal, so. Here's uh, Inter Arma. This is The Cavern. It's on Relapse. Yeah, I'm kind of a Relapse fanboy. Um, I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm 13. Uh, so this was billed as, you know, 45 minute long, epic, prog metal thing along the lines of Mastodon. And yeah, it, it is. Um... I also picked up their first record, Inter Arma. This is a double LP, also on Relapse. Let me get fold. Uh, I want to like this more than I do. Um, this stuff's hard to pull off. Um, some great lead guitar playing, I'll give it that. Um, but it's few and far between. I'm not sure I'm going to keep those. This, on the other hand, is what keeps Relapse, you know, on my radar. Uh, Uznia or Usnia, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, the name of the album is Random Cosmic Violence. Um, these guys are from Richmond, I think. Um, this is their second album. Uh, this is crushingly heavy, awesome doom out of Portland. Um, right out of the Yob thing. Um, great growling vocals and killer complicated droney doom tracks. I, this is great, really. Um, I liked it so much that I ordered their first album, their first self-titled album, which is on Orca Wolf. Um, unfortunately, this is really should have been a double album. I guess they cheaped out, uh, but the download includes the rest of it, um, and it's great, but this has much better production, much stronger songs, just all around. <sighs> just the kind of thing I, you know, I dig. Cheers. Um, this I found... Uh, not new. It's a new record, but um, it appeared to be unplayed, so I 
you know, it was like half off, so I'm like, what the hell, check it out. This is Flying Lotus's new record. Uh, it's called You're Dead. Uh, I remember Jonas showing this. Some other people have shown it. Uh, it's got that neat foil stamping on the cover. Um, I guess this is hip hop. Um, I'm out of the loop. Uh, pop. Herbie Hancock plays a lot on this. Co writes some tracks. Uh, I liked it a lot. I didn't like how it was spread across two LPs. Probably could easily fit on one disc, but sounds great. It's on warp. Uh, yeah, I was happy to find this for half off. Uh, apparently, their earlier records have been recently reissued. I might check them out. Yeah, Flying Lotus. Uh, another hip hop record that I found used but totally mint, so I grabbed it. This is LP's Fantastic Damage uh, on his own label, Definitive Jux. Uh, from 2003, I think. Um, I have his second record. Um, uh, conscious hip hop, political hip hop, um, really dense avant garde um, constructions. Yeah, I really like this. This is the kind of hip hop I like. Um, dense, political, heavy. Um, you know, I'm not gonna listen to it all the time, but um, I'm happy to find it. You know, meant for you know, cheap. Um, some other used things. Uh, here's some Mark Doctor Deadwax. He made a comment on one of his videos sometime back about how blue notes are his, what did he say, like $10 blue notes are like his crack. Um, down here in the States, I'm now running across, you know, I'm looking for blue notes. And usually well under $10, so, you know, for me, like a $5 blue note is like crack. Um, even if I don't really know what it is. So I found a few over the past month. Uh, here's Chico Hamilton's. Peregrinations from 1975. Uh, yeah, I'm blue note. Uh, nice cover. Uh, I wasn't expecting much of this, but this is really, really nice. Um, you know, it gives credits for like sweetening recorded at Sound Factory. And, uh, so there's vocals, but it's more like a chanting kind of thing. That's really good 70s. Fusiony, kind of Latiny, um, great playing. Good jazz record. Good blue label, blue note. Happy about that. Uh, this was kind of disappointing to me, though. This is "Sweet Lou" by Lou Donaldson from uh, 1974, and. Uh, you know, it's a big band with strings, and you know, there's no sweetening credits here, but boy, there's a lot of sweetening on it. Um, uh, it just uh, tries to be funky, and I don't know, poor Lou, he sounds out of place, and they've slapped like some echo on his horn, and um, I, I don't know. I listened to it twice, and uh, I'm probably not gonna keep this. Uh, this is way better. Uh, Bobby Hutcherson, Linger Lane. This is from uh, 1975. Uh, great band, Bobby Hutchison on marimba exclusively. Uh, Chuck Rainey on bass, Harvey Mason drums, uh, John Rowan on guitar, Ernie Watts horns, Bobby Hall percussion, Jerry Peters Fender Rhodes. Um, well, maybe not all star. Uh, recorded outdoors in Idlewild, California. Really nice record. I love Bobby Hutchison. My favorite mallet percussions. Uh, found this seal, cheap, kind of water damaged, but cleaned up okay. This is uh, Sadeo Watanabe uh, with Chick Corea, Miroslav Petus, and Jack Dejanet. Um, Vanguard. Uh, Round Trip is the name of the album, 1974. Um, wonky production with the piano way over on the left and the drums on the right. And, um, but great killer early 70s models influenced electric fusion. Uh, even though Chick plays acoustic piano on some of this. Uh, yeah, this is great. Um, 
This is a neat find. Uh, Gary Bart's in the two band, Cinderella, A Ghetto Fairy Tale. It's from 1974 on Prestige. Uh, when I saw it, it was just filthy, but uh, cleaned up nice. Uh, and I guess this is maybe the last in the two record. Um, I'd like to hear the rest. You know, Gary Bart's played with Miles in the 70s. Uh, and this has, uh, I don't recognize any of these players. Maynard Parker guitar, Hubert Eves, electric acoustic piano, clavinet, James Benjamin, electric bass, Howard King drums. Um, yeah, funky, singing, kind of a concept album. Uh, but it works. It's soulful, it's great, it's very 70s. Uh, this is, yeah, I've had this on stuff on CD, but I was happy to find this on Heiress to Freedom, The Paris Session, uh, by the Art Ensemble of Chicago, from, uh, recorded in 1969, and this was issued in 1975, I guess. Uh, it's a white label promo, um, hardly played, uh, sounds fantastic. Um, now, I, again, I think Jonas wrote this record, and, uh, said it was hard, hard going, uh, and I guess it is. Um, uh, they haven't settled on a drummer, so it's kind of sparse, and they're switching around instruments a lot. Um, but there's actually a playfulness and a sense of humor about it that maybe, um, uh, maybe it's hard to catch the first time around. Um, anyway, I love this; it's hugely influential in my you know, early life. So happy to have this on vinyl, quite a little promo with that. Well, I'm zipping through these. Um, some more jazz. Another label that gets me all hot and bothered. Um, like a lot of people, the NPS label. Uh, here's Jean Ponty, a Sunday Walk it's from 1972. Uh, with Wolf. Wolfgang Downer on piano, uh, Niels Henning Orsted Pedersen on bass, and Daniel Humer on drums. Uh, you can see this is a young Jean Luc. Uh, it's in it's crazy Unipack. Uh, this is this is a good, fairly straight ahead jazz record. I um, also found this, um, which is from '73, Open Strings, the Jean Luc Ponty Experience. Uh, this has Joachim Kuhn on piano, Philippe Catherine on guitar, Oliver Johnson drums, Peter Warren bass. This is excellent. Um, this gets pretty out there and is nothing like the slick fusion -y records he would go on to make um, for is it Atlantic. Um, yeah, this is cool. Again, on the great NPS, BASF label. Um, yeah, totally psyched to find these. Uh, here's a kind of a VC favorite. Uh, when I saw it, I had to grab it. This is uh, Doors by Eric Kloss. Uh, I think I don't know much about this Eric Kloss guy. I don't know any of these players. Neil Crick, piano, electric piano, Gene Taylor bass and Fender bass, Ron Krasinski drums and tambourine. Uh, recorded January 1st, 1972. This is on Cobblestone. Uh, I have another Eric Kloss record, a later record. Uh, with Mike Knock, uh, it's a little slick. This is this is really good. This is um, uh, that inside outside kind of thing where um, it gets kind of out but not too out. It'll hew close to you know a melody and a harmony, but not cliche. Yeah, this is a really really nice record. Um, super happy to find that. Uh, just a few more. Um, I've been looking for this for a while. This used to be um, a, pun intended, ubiquitous record, but now it's kind of hard to find in good shape. Um, Roy Ayer's Ubiquity, Everybody Loves the Sunshine. Uh, Trish, DJ Trish. Uh, by the way, thank you for the mixed CDs. Uh, once again, Elizabeth absconded with them, so I forgot to Bring them and show them, but thank you for the VCLT. Uh, the title track was on one of those mixed CDs, and um, Liz had never heard that song before. She went crazy. Um, yeah, great, funky, soulful jazz stuff. Um, 
get a little slick, but great, just the same. Uh, really happy to have this back in my collection. I used to have it back in the 70s, but yeah. I'm Polydor uh, from 76. Great stuff. Uh, found a few new agey things where they were stuck away in the new age bin at Grayscape. Um, this is classic new age Laraji Essence Universe on Audion. Uh, great. You know, just like the cover, very, very spacey uh, with uh, Laraji playing electronic mode zither, chimes voice, uh, treatments by Richard Ashman. So yeah, very treated, very electronic, very, very soothing and spacey. Excellent. Uh, totally mint. Three dollars. Um, recorded 1987, came out in 87. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful record. Uh, wasn't sure what this is going to be like. Uh, Dieter Schutz Voyage on the Lifestyle label. Uh, but I saw it was licensed from Sky Records. In Germany, so I thought, well, why not? Uh, and it's a nice, um, you know, German electronic kind of ambient uh, cosmic space music. Um, yeah, 1985 on Sky. I guess this is probably the U.S. distribution of that. Um, yeah, really cool. Again, I think of I think of Carm when I see stuff like this. And I'm always really happy um, when it turns out to be even better than I expect. This is one of them. Uh, this, I expect it to be more new agey than it is. Uh, this is Danny Hines, Aqua Touch. Never heard of this guy. This is on Silver Wave Records from 1986. Clean cut kid there. Uh, I noticed that Paul McCandless played oboe on it, so I thought, well, you know, how, how bad could it be, right? Uh, this is really more of a jazz fusion album, um, very much along the lines of Pat Metheny group kind of stuff. Uh, really nice guitar playing, some nice compositions. Um, yeah, I mean, a couple bucks, mint, uh, really just positive. Coffee table, as Derek says, yeah, maybe a, a little bit, but. I, Rises above that in terms of execution, I think. Uh, I don't know. I enjoyed it. That's it for now. Uh, there's some other stuff. Uh, I got some birthday presents that were uh, all of the digital variety. But I'm going to show those because that's what we do here in the VC, right? Show stuff. Thank you all for watching. I'm amazed I got that in in under half an hour. Um, Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon.